Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's about 4.30 on February 19th. And uh, before we get started, I need to remind you as always that the, the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I control lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. Let's take a look. I thought I'd do a little experiment here on a three-day chart. And what I did was I created these rectangles that <clears throat> take two things to define them. The first thing is a major or at least an intermediate low and then the reversal point uh, where we had the first significant downturn. Um, well, let, let me let me change that because it, it that may not be the best explanation because this one right here actually is lined up with the top. So let's just call it... Uh, bottoms and tops and what you'll see here is that initially in 2009 we had this big move that was defined by a, a good bit of height a significant height and a significant duration our next move was um, in the uh, middle of 2010 Here's our bottom, here's our top. Significantly less volume in this box. Our next um, thing that we look at is our bottom, October of 2011, and our top. Less volume than this box. Then we've got this one right here, which took place in, in the latter part of 2012. And now, as we stand today, this box may be here, 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 but I have it drawn at least <coughs> for comparison purposes um, <clears throat> at today's closing price and closing date. And this <clears throat> kind of illustrates what I've been noticing and what I'm sure you've been noticing is that everything is taking place on at least what until now has been shorter time frames as evidenced by the bottom of these rectangles and lesser moves as evidenced by the height of these rectangles. So are we dealing with <clears throat> uh, this rally so far in 2013 as something that's going to buck this trend well we don't know yet um, I will remind you that as we have seen in the past whenever you get above a resistance line that is ascending you cannot count on that line to hold as it did not hold in 2011 and we are now slightly above that brown line. If we look on a 30-minute chart, here's the brown line. And we spent almost all of the day today above that line. Let me get rid of my little box here. Where's my handle for it? There it is. So here's what happened today. We... Um, essentially, not, not it doesn't look exactly like it, but we, we essentially just gapped up into this territory here. And for those of you who believe in technical analysis, um, which I hope are most of you, we'd been looking for a target of between 1530 and 1531 as evidenced and as projected by our tri uh, excuse me our diamond pattern right here that took place over a couple of weeks 
um, l- late January and into the first week of February. That pattern had a minimum projected target of well, right around 1530, 1531. And here we are, 1530.72. Um, I was conflicted about whether or not I thought we would make that target that easily because of this brown line. But I want to remind you going forward, uh, I would not I would not expect this brown line to provide a tremendous amount of support on any selling that may ensue. And going forward, just to cut to the chase, here's Here's the line we still have to watch. We've been watching this line almost all year long. This is still the thing that is working. That is our bottom support line for this channel that has a little bit of raggedness in the top. But this is the bottom support line. We bounced on it again. Started that bounce. Um... Um, late in the day on Friday and then just zoomed on up essentially um, with the low on Friday which was oh roughly 1514 here we close up nearly a two percent no I take it back 15 1514 to 1530 we close up, well, it's just a little bit more than 1% off of that low. So that, that makes this, this channel kind of interesting because there isn't a tremendous amount of uh, uh, um, distance from the support line to the resistance line. If we were to go on up and tag this at, uh, you know, let's say in a couple days at 1540, we're looking at a at a support line and a resistance line that are less than 2% separated. So I'm just kind of wondering, as I've been wondering this in t- almost entire year, how long will, will the S&P just keep plowing on up? Um, it, it is very interesting to watch this happen. But if you're long and... Um, and I am long, not obviously not long enough because I'm not, I'm all, you know, I'm mostly cash. But if you were, if you were long, I would, I would just say, you know, wait for this guy down here to break. Because obviously, um, if you sold the tops here and you were really nimble, you might could have done well. But, you know, until that bottom line breaks, I'd say don't try to fix it. This market just looks to be, um, wanting to plow right on up. Now I'll say this again, <clears throat> and and to my peril, probably, but here we gapped up again, and what do we do? Well, we immediately start this this little kind of sort of lazy ascent right here. So the question is, is this going to be one of those typhoon flags that that breaks? pretty soon or is this just the the market forgetting what lies behind and just pressing on going boldly where no man has gone before Um, you know just not really worried about um, um, testing previous levels of support so guys wow sort of caught me by surprise again today this market uh, you know, is is surprising in its strength. But you know, there's something, there's something underlying this that still concerns me. <clears throat> and, and I still want to keep a real close eye on it because we know the retail investor is now, has been this year, putting money back into the market. And we need to watch real closely what happens over the next few weeks to few months to see if we form another topping pattern here 
we have at every point we've gotten close to this brown line we have formed some type of pattern that has served as a fairly serious reversal and eventually we will have an even more serious reversal I'm not saying we are there yet but I've been eyeing this line at about 1600 thinking man oh man this is a significant line here right here that red line drawn over the 2000 market top in the S&P and the 2007 top and here we are so close to it I think that certainly bears keeping a very very close eye on but as we approach that line assuming we do I believe we will likely see I, d I don't think we would run up to that and then just do a hairpin turn let's put it that way I think we would run up to this and we would start to juke and jive and and we would form some kind of pattern that hopefully will give us a clue uh, as to when the market is ready to once again turn down for some downward for some to, to do some selling to get that done with you see we've done it here we've done it here 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 and by the way it's interesting to note if you look at these rectangles you'll see just how much time over the past um, f um, nearly four years how much time has been spent in these rallies and how little time has been spent selling off that that again reminds us that the markets take about twice as long to rise as they take to descend so guys there's the video for uh, February 19th just reminding you again watch this line I think that's the important one so uh, guys thanks for watching thank you for your support and uh, look for a video after tomorrow's close